Among the trends in the Islamic communities in the West and also in the countries of origin, uh, a perception that women, you know, should not be allowed to work and and there are some rules that are discriminatory in the way we are dealing with, with women. The literalists' uh, reading of the scriptural sources. So we have this trend, and this has an impact on the, the 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 situation of Muslim women in the West. At the same time, we have the cultural dimension. The cultural dimension is really how the Muslim women uh, or the Islamic principles are understood in the countries of origin, where we have very macho uh, uh, cultures, patriarchal cultures in Asia, in the Arab world, in Africa. So this also has an impact on the way they are going to, to, to first settle in, in Europe or in the, in the West and then uh, being integrated in, in, in the whole process because you still have people from the first generation thinking that it's not so important to educate women because this is not what they should do and at the, in the future they will be at home and, 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 and serving the family. So we have this religious cause, the cultural cause, and then what happened when the first generation arrived here, which was as all the immigration, uh, immigrant communities, the first step is to protect yourself from the new environment. And the first, uh, uh, you know, to, to be protected are perceived uh, as the women. This is what we have to do first. And then we had women not going to school, being isolated from the society, self-segregated sometimes. What we can see now with the second, third and onward generation is something which is, is much better. First, in schools, uh, the, the women, the young girls are doing much better, in fact, than the, 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 the young boys. And this is something which is really paradoxical but understandable. The first attitude that, we, what, that was to protect them, push them to just to focus on schools and study, and they did it very well. So you had young boys going out and, and not being being free and much freer than the the, the 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 young girls and the girls focusing on school because this was the way to uh, occupy their time and at the same time to find a way to be free and they did it very well. So what we have now in all the European countries as well as in the States is a very high standard of educated uh, Muslim women understanding better the distinction between culture and religion and the fact that very often what was perceived as the true Islamic teachings was in fact influenced by the cultures of origin and literalist reading and now having this understanding. We are in a transitory period and we have to understand that it's going to be a very long process but this woman with other men, with scholars, understanding better the distinction that I was mentioning would help, will help a process of a better access to their legitimate rights for women. There, there is an, an, a, a wrong understanding of what it means just to, to be modest and to try to, to protect yourself, both in fact men and women. The perception is that for women it means uh, not to be seen in public or not to be with men and not to be in the public sphere, for example, and to stay at home which is completely of the opposite of what even the, the, the prophet of Islam did, which is to accept women in mosques, to accept women in the social sphere, in the economic sphere. His own wife was a, a, a trader and she was connected to the society. So we have to come to the very deep understanding. If, for example, men and women are asked to be modest, it's because they are going to be in the same place and, and you are not modest for your own family, you are modest towards the whole surrounding society. So for example, even the headscarf, the headscarf is not to remain at home, the headscarf is, is in fact to push you to be present in the social, social sphere and also to go to school. So we have to change this understanding which is once again influenced by literalist reading and cultural uh, 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 understanding in the countries of origin to come to a better understanding that, okay, you can at the same time respect the religious 
requirements as to the dress, as to modesty, as your, your, your understanding of what it means to be a practicing Muslim woman. But you should go to school because it's an obligation. In fact, it's a religious obligation. I have a, a, a saying of the Prophet saying, meaning seeking knowledge is an obligation for men and women, Muslim men and women, not only men. So school, working, if you, you know, just to be able to work, and, and, and not only this, to work and to ask for the same salary, for the same competence, all this is really important. And this is why on my side I'm pushing uh, something I call the Islamic feminism, understood as go back to the Islamic sources, understand the Islamic principles, and act with these principles against any kind of discriminations done in the name of very narrow-minded reading of the sources or the cultural reading uh, or understanding. So, so I think that all this perception that you don't have to mix or you don't have, you know, for example, you don't have to be in the same uh, room with men, all this is you know, uh, exaggeration and very, very superficial understanding of the deep meaning of what it means to be a, a Muslim woman. Not only this is happening in Europe or in the States, it's also happening in Morocco, it's happening in Indonesia, in the Islamic majority countries, with something which is a uh, very assertive presence based on two things. I want to remain a Muslim woman, but I want to decide for myself. So this is what we have to, to push for now. Yes, we have literature coming from, you know, the, the, ver the classical Islamic tradition uh, still obsessed with you as a woman. You have to think about your role as a mother, your role as a wife. This is what I'm always saying. We are obsessed in the Islamic tradition with speaking about women and the role of the, 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 the functions, in fact, within the society, which is completely wrong. We really have to come with a better understanding as uh, a discourse on women as women and women as women within the society is also something which is really important. It's coming and more and more women are now starting to speak for themselves. Mixing, we have to be very cautious, there are levels of mixing. So if we are speaking about being you know, in the society and working and having a role as a, a citizen, as a woman, being uh, electing and being elected, and uh, all this has to be at play. Now you may have practicing women saying, look, this is my freedom to be in the society, but I don't want, for example, to go in a swimming pool because the way my body is going to be uh, shown is not the way I think it's to be a good Muslim. Here, we are not dealing, we, are, we should be very careful not to create a problem of integration on these decisions. If freedom is what you want, if freedom of choice is what you are proclaiming, just be consistent. A woman who decides for herself to wear the headscarf, you cannot say that she is alienated or self-alienated. Let her decide. And if she doesn't want to, to, to wear the headscarf, let her decide. To come to something which at the end is leadership. Because, you know, I'm working with so many Muslim women. They are more effective, more efficient. They are working very well. And I think that the future is to uh, at least a shared leadership, if not a, a stronger uh, Muslim uh, uh, presence for the women uh, as to uh, driving the, the communities towards something which is a better uh, presence and a more rooted uh, understanding in, in the West.
تهزم ولم تهني أذت في الله لم تهزم ولم تهني حتى غادت أمة الإسلام في النجوم صلي